Alright, so in this tutorial we're just going to be going over how you can create some borders and make the cut. It's a pretty simple process and I know that we've done this tutorial in the past. However, if you haven't noticed, make the cut has evolved a little and plus in this video we're going to show you a different method on creating these borders. So the goal in this lesson is precision. You know, we're going to go for the perfect amount of shapes to fit on a given length like the border here. So a little math is involved, but I promise it's not rocket science. All right, so let's go ahead and start with a clean slate. This is a new page, and the first thing that we need to do is put some basic shapes on the mat so we can work with it. All right, and where can you get these shapes, of course? It's in the basic shape button right here at the top. So the two shapes that we need in order to create this grass effect is one is a triangle. So you're going to go ahead and go to the search box and type in triangle you know as soon as you get to the eye and triangle you notice that the our shape appears and we're just gonna go ahead and click on that shape and it's gonna be placed on our mat All right so the next thing that we need is the square I'm just gonna go ahead and type in the word square in the search field and I'm gonna use this square right here I'm just gonna click on it and it's gonna be added to my mat okay so the next thing that we need in order to do perfection of course is we need the selection box property and if, it, if you don't see this box on your um, on your screen right now you can go ahead and go to view selection property bar and that will go ahead and bring up this right here and right here you know you get the length and the width and we're going to be adjusting these things and what this window basically does for us it allows us to modify a shape that we've selected on our mat you know uh, the X and Y our positions on the mat you know just like we've learned in elementary school what X and Y are and the W and H is the width and height so we're gonna be using the the width and height in this tutorial alright so say in this example we want a 7 inch wide border for the square so let's go ahead and select the square and we're gonna go ahead and make it 7 inches exactly by ensuring that the lock on the selection property box window is open and this just allows us to manipulate both the width and the height numbers if we have the lock bar locked that means if we type in a number in the width it's automatically going to proportion out the height so that it's the same ratio and we don't want to manipulate that we want to be able to control each variable uh, independently all right, so once we type 7 in the width box and we're going to push the enter key, notice immediately on the mat that the shape is now longer. It is 7 inches, exactly. And we're just going to go ahead and leave the height alone in this example. All right, so if you take a look at this triangle, right now it is set at 1 inch. And our border is 7 inches. So how many triangles do you think we're going to need in order to cover that top border? If each triangle, each base of that triangle is one inch. Well, we're going to need seven of them. See, I told you it's easy math. All right, so let's get ready for some make the cut magic. Now I'm just going to select anywhere on the mat. I just want to make sure that nothing is currently selected. Then I'm going to hold the control button down and I'm going to go ahead and select the triangle while I'm holding that control button down and I'm going to drag that triangle on top of that rectangle. And you'll notice that the mouse cursor will actually change from an arrow to something that has a circle, square, and a triangle. It's now once it's over the rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and release the mouse and a new window will appear. Now notice that the triangle automatically snaps to that left corner so that we now have one triangle on our border. And all we need is six more. So I'm going to go ahead and click the repeat button. I'm going to go ahead and choose six of them as my repeat number. Now we're going to go ahead and go down to spacing for this. That means it's the spacing between the triangles. And I want it to be zero. I want it to be zero. So as soon as the triangle is repeated, it gets as close as it can to that next triangle so that we can fit all seven triangles on that top border. All right, so next we need to go down to the vertical alignment. And we just need to take this down 1%, so just so it reads 99%. And this is just so that later on when we go to weld that the shapes will actually mesh together. Alright, so the next process that, uh, that has to happen after this is we need to go ahead and select all. 
and we're just going to hit the weld button and as you can see they all go together all right so as you can see it's pretty easy to create your own borders within make the cut software and i just want to go ahead and go back to the original page here to show you some examples and give you some creative ideas on how we actually accomplished uh, these other borders now all the borders that we've used um, if you remember in this tutorial we just used the basic rectangle as the border you know or a square that we stretched out to make that rectangle and the shape that we used on the second one is just a normal circle and the only difference in this one is when we went and adjusted the vertical alignment we set this one to 50 percent rather than setting it to 99 percent so it's the same technique same process to get uh, the look for the second one all right for this last one here we we used everything that was in built built in make the cut in order to do this one as well we used a circle a moon and a square that we stretched out to make it look like a rectangle the uh, the thin stick right there and the only difference on this one compared to the uh, first one is that we used the spacing. We actually adjusted the spacing. I think we used a 0 .04 for this one. And that was just to, uh, to separate the circles uh, from each other on the top, just so that they're not so close together all the time. All right, so well, that wraps this tutorial up. I hope that, uh, that you enjoyed it, and hopefully you can have just one more tool in your tool bag in order to create your own designs within Make the Cut software. So I'm Rob with ScrappyDo.com, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.